that is watching how are you feeling this morning i'm coming to you live from queens new york you're listening to arms of flesh by robert and janine bailey that's the name of the song that is blessing you this morning amen hallelujah thank you spirit of the living god oh lord i feel it it's gonna be a wonderful morning in the presence of god if you have not invited somebody yet do it now do it now tag 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 sheer invite 10 persons come on light up your whatsapp light up your messenger light up your page now share this broadcast and bless somebody amen hallelujah he's trying hard to break you but the hand of the lord is covering you come on somebody sing along with me this morning and be blessed amen you come in the arms of flesh but i come in the name of the lord worship with me this morning people of god lift up your voices and praise him this morning amen lift up your voices and praise the lord this morning as you come in just worship we know the god 
that we serve. Amen. We know the God that we serve. Be a blessing to somebody this morning. Just share this. Share this live stream now. I am sharing as I speak. Go ahead, people of God, and do the same. Share this broadcast and bless somebody's life. The devil lose again. He's trying to block your promotion, but he loses again. Amen. Just go ahead and share, 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 share. Come on, somebody. Good morning, Yolanda Brown. Good morning, Christine Barnes. Good morning to you, Tasha Sam. Grace Rambali. Good morning, Shashin Whitaker. Fantella Sams. Good morning to you, Francine Lewis. Jacqueline Sewell. Verona Barbaron. Good morning to you, my mother. Apostle Frederica Burby. Good morning. Love you, mother. Love you. Good morning, Tarifa Graham. Yes, it is. Sweet music. Prophetess Dolores. Good morning. How are you doing? How are you doing? Good morning, Marcia Barnes. Carly Nelson. Marie Daly. Malva Hogan. Ione. Or is it Lona? Lona Isaacs. Good morning. Alcia Miller. Sister Gogo. I haven't seen you in a while. You're watching from South Africa. How are you doing, sister? What time is it over there in South Africa now? What time is it? Hallelujah. Ah, oh, flesh, but I come in the name of the Lord. Worship the Lord this morning, people of God. The weapons of your warfare are not carnal, but they are what? They are mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. Pull down some strongholds this morning. Pull down some strongholds as you join this morning. Come on, somebody. Worship the Lord this morning and pull down some strongholds in your life. He is wrong. The mantle of victory is rising up. It is rising up. Come on, people of God, share this broadcast. Share it now. Share it now and let us have a wonderful time in the presence of the Lord this morning. How is everybody doing? Let me know where you are watching from as you join me. As you join me, just let me know where you are watching from. Amen. The hand of the Lord is upon you this morning. The hand of the Lord is upon you, child of God. Wherever you are watching from, let me know this morning. God bless you. Thank you for joining. I appreciate having you on the live stream with me this morning. Amen. Worship him. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We must lick that one one more time this morning. It's called Arms of Flesh. And this is from Robert and Geneve Bailey. Amen. So we're going to play this one one more time. We're warming up the atmosphere. We're setting the mood for the Spirit of God to move this morning. As I share with you a word about spiritual battles. Many of you are fighting wars. You're fighting battles and you don't know that the genesis of your battle is in the spirit. You think that it's a natural battle. You think it's a normal battle. But you are up against forces of darkness. So this morning is your morning of enlightenment. Come on, somebody, share this broadcast. Let somebody else know that Rev is live. Go ahead and share. Share, share, share. Share as many times as you can this morning and let us bless the people of God. Amen. I'm following you guys on the phone. Just want to make sure I stay close to you guys on Facebook. Amen. Thank you, Lord. But I come in the name of the Lord. One more time, people of God. We speak with the voice of the Lord this morning. Good morning, good morning. If you're just joining me, welcome. Let me know where you are watching from. If you're watching for the first time, I'm happy to have you. My name is Marie Burbick. I'm a pastor. MDMI Ministries. We are located here in Queens, New York. We meet every Tuesday at 19418 120th Avenue. We meet at 7 p.m. every Tuesday night. You're welcome to come out. If you're in New York, come out and join us. Come out and be blessed. Amen. Good morning, Odinga Patrick, watching from Uganda. Good to have you. Good morning, Faze Shad. You're watching from Trinidad. Good morning, Kashaba Dawkins. Good morning to you, Sister Marcia. Good morning, my sister Nadine Burbick, French. Good morning, Sherlyn Powell. Minister Marcia Wright, how are you this morning? Rolanda Anan, how are you? Share the live now, people of God, as we prepare to get into the word. This is a word that you cannot miss this morning. I am here to let you know whether or not your battle is spiritual. Come on, somebody. We are not operating out of the flesh this morning. We are in the spirit, fully in the spirit. Come on, just worship the Lord. Sing along with me and allow the song to minister to your spirit as we prepare 
for a powerful word this morning, a word of enlightenment. Yes, everyone who is in the dark this morning, this word has come to pull you out of the dark and into the light. So go ahead and share, share. Bless somebody's life this morning as you join. Bless somebody this morning. Hallelujah. Whoever is coming in the arms of flesh, we are coming in the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. Hey. We speak with the voice of the Lord this morning. Yes. Come in the name of the Lord. All right, people of God, every one of you that is watching, go ahead and share this live stream as I prepare to share a word with you and be a blessing in your life this morning. Share the word, share the word. If you're just joining me, good morning and welcome to another live stream with me, Reverend Marie Burbick. I'm coming to you live from Queens, New York on this beautiful Saturday morning. What about you? How are you doing? Where are you watching from? Is this your first time watching? If it is, then accept a special welcome from me. Hallelujah. Remember to like and follow the page as you join. If you're watching for the first time, remember to like and follow the page so that you will know when I come live and you will know when I post anything on the page to empower you. Amen. Hallelujah. There is good food in this house. There is good food in this house and we want to nourish your spirit. So make sure that you do three things for me this morning as you come on this live stream. One, share the live. Two, like and follow the page. Three, participate in the program. Comment, like. Let's have a wonderful time in the Lord this morning. Amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Let us have a wonderful time in the Lord. Thank you, Spirit of the Living God. There's one more song I want to play before I get into the word this morning. Thank you, Jesus. It is well, it is well, it is well. Come on, somebody. Let us worship the Lord this morning. Let us worship him in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. Go ahead now and share this broadcast if you haven't done so yet. There's another song I'm going to pull up for you shortly. In Jesus' name. Yes. But the hand of the Lord, it still covers me, somebody. If you know the hand of the Lord is covering you this morning, just worship, sing and dance. Come on, come on, somebody, worship the Lord. Worship the Lord this morning, hallelujah. Worship him. There's a song I haven't played in a while, but it's one of my theme songs. It is one of my theme songs and I'm gonna try to pull that song up for you. Amen. I'm gonna try to pull that song up for you. Glory to God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Prepare for the next song that is about to hit you. No devil can block your promotion this morning, people of God. Come on. Which God do you serve? In Jesus' name, Sister Genevieve. They can't take it from us this morning. Come on, sister, sing it. Yes. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. This is a morning where we are telling the enemy, we're reminding him who we are in Christ. Amen. We are not afraid because we come in the name of the Lord. He comes in the arms of flesh, but we come in the name of the Lord. Come on, somebody. Let us worship the Lord this morning as we prepare for Jabez. Yes. Come on, wind it down, oh sister. Wind it down, oh sister. Wind it down a little bit. Wind it down a little bit. Let us bring up brother Jabez. Amen. Glory to God. Where are the warriors? Where are the warriors this morning? This is your song. Come on, somebody. Wherever you are this morning, just let me know where you are warring from this morning. This is Jabez. The song is called Warrior. Those of you who have been following this ministry, you know I love this song. Come on, somebody. We are warriors. Rise up, my warriors. Wherever you're watching from this morning, let me know. Rise up in the spirit this morning. All my warriors, take up your armor. Take up your weapons. Rise up this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody. Worship the Lord. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Stand up this morning, warriors. Stand up this morning. Rise up this morning. Rise up and take up your armor. Rise up, warriors, in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody. Where are my warriors? Ina McCoy is watching from Jamaica. Good morning, sister Ina. Good morning, Mignon Blaze. You're watching from Queens. Come on, somebody. 
Sister, Sister Moraine said, this is my new dance song. Good morning, Esther Brown, watching from Trinidad. Come on, let me know where you are watching from, people of God. I'm hailing up Odin Edwards, watching from Jamaica. Good morning, Brother Odin. Share the live stream. Good morning, Sister Nad Smith. Erica Anderson, how are you? Good morning, Sister Shireen. Deverin Henry Cole, how are you doing this morning? Come on, somebody. Sashin, Colleen Robinson, good morning to you, wherever you are watching from. Christine Barnes, good morning, Cynthia Carroll. Marvia Sewell, Rolanda Anan. We now back down. Satan kingdom must come down. It must come down. Goliath. Where are the warriors? Yes, Lord. Come on, somebody. We are in the mode this morning to win the war. I don't know what your battle is, but we're going to win. Tell somebody this morning on this broadcast, I'm going to win my battle. Tell somebody I'm going to win my battle. Evangelist Deborah, tell somebody you're going to win this battle. Dahima B, tell somebody you're going to win this battle. Good morning to you, Dahima. I see your prayer request. Good morning, good morning as you join Vivian Edwards. Good morning, Shaki Rete. Good morning, Joel. Good morning, Sister Deidre and Smith. Good morning to you, Deidre Lee. Nicolette Dawkins, how are you doing? Tarifa is watching from Jamaica. Wave that flag, girl. Wave that flag. Good morning, Sister, Sister Bashe. How are you doing? Salute to you, my sister. Glory to God. Good morning, Anne-Marie Poiser. Salute to you, sister. Good morning, Shereen Hay. All my warriors this morning. No, 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 Nicole. Nic 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 We're not warriors. We are warriors. Come on, sister. Warriors, not warriors. Don't get it twisted. Glory to God. We are warriors rising up this morning. Let me know where you are watching from. Good morning. Good morning. Evangelists, as you join Melissa. Sir Jeremiah, good morning, Sister Amara Thomas. How are you doing, cuz? Good morning, good morning, everybody who is joining. Go ahead and share. I want you to share to 10 persons this morning or 10 groups. Sister Sharon Phoenix, I see you up, sister. God bless you. I love you, Sister Sharon, and I miss you. Hope to see you at church as soon as possible. Amen. Good morning, Malva. Which church you come from? Which church you come from? Which church you come from? See him, God. I don't care which church you come from. Same God. Same God. Same God. Same God. Jump around if you're a warrior. Same God. We're worshiping the same God. I don't care which church you come out of. You can't see my feet moving, but I'm kicking out my feet. Come on, kick up your foot this morning. People of God, warriors, jump around. Worship the Lord this morning. And let the Holy Spirit know that he's welcome in this place. Come on. Sister Dorrit, good morning. Somebody else is watching from Trinidad. Good morning to you, Sister Jasmine Moody. Muniram Ramnath, you're watching from Trinidad. Good to see you. God bless you. Rise up on war this morning, people of God. You are warriors in the kingdom. Amen. Glory to God. Yes, yes, yes. We are ready this morning, people of God. We are ready for the word of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We are ready for the word. Who is ready for the word? Who is ready for the word? Who is ready for the word of God? Thank you, Jesus. We are warriors. Keep fighting. Keep fighting. Yes. We have your flag. We have your flag. We have your flag. Let me see where you're warring from this morning. Sister Deidre and Smith, I see you skanking down the place. Wave your flag, people of God, as I prepare to give the word. Wave your flag. Let me know where you're watching from this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, spirit of the living God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm telling you. The one day hot. The one day hot. The one day hot. Oh, glory to God. I have to take it down. I have to take the pace down just a little bit. Just a little bit. I have to take the pace down. One more song. Let me put up Elijah. Oleante. Come on, somebody, this morning. Yes, so good. Anybody who is here to testify, this song is for you. I'm pulling it up right now. It's called So Good by Elijah Oyelade. So if you are here this morning and you're feeling good, this is your song. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. We're taking it down just a little bit. Amen. We're taking it down just a little bit before the word. This song is called So Good. If you're here this morning because you know that God is going to give you a testimony, this song is for you. He is so good. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He is so good, people of God. Come on this morning. Just worship him. Worship him. Worshiping people of God, yes? Yeah. 
Sing along, people of God. If he has made your life so beautiful and you're here to testify, this is your song. Elijah or Yolanda, there's a song, it's called So Good. I cannot shut my mouth because God has done so much good for me. Come on, somebody. What is it you're thanking God for this morning? Just type it on this broadcast. What is it you're thanking God for? Share your testimony this morning. Come on, we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Share your testimony this morning. What has God done for you? Glorify his name because he is so good. So good, people of God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. We're not asking anybody about God. We're telling you about God because we know God. We have experienced God. God is with us. He's always with us. He never leaves us. He never forsakes us. We're talking about what we know this morning. He is so good. Oh, glory to God. Come on, somebody. If he's so good in your life, worship him this morning. If you're here to testify, open your mouth and write that thing on this broadcast. Testify of his goodness. What has he done for you? What has he done the past week? What has he done the past few days? What is it that God has done for you? What has made him so good in your life? Tell somebody some good news. Testify this morning. Testify in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody. Worship him this morning. Minister Marcia right? Worship him. Good morning. Morning to you, Deborah. Worship him, Tamara Hermit. Worship him, Sister Moraine. Come on, somebody. I feel it in my spirit this morning. I'm just bumbling over with the joy of the Lord. I'm bumbling over with the joy of the Lord. Come on, somebody. Are you feeling it this morning? Worship the Lord and give him thanks because he is so good. Worship. I'm here to testify. Who else is here to testify? Glory to God. Who else is here to testify? Yes, Natalie Stewart. Testify, sister. Oh, what he has done for me. I cannot tell it all. Hallelujah. Praise him. Yes, God, I remember where you brought me from. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. I suffered for so many years, God Almighty. You know the struggles. You know the warfare. You know the battles. But through it all, God, you were right there. Through it all, God, you never left me. Through it all, God, you never forsake me. We welcome you in this house this morning, Spirit of the living God. We welcome you on this live stream. We pray, mighty God, that you will bless everyone who is watching this morning. Whatever battles they are fighting this morning, God, we decree and declare that the victory is assured. You have already fought and won that battle for them. My God, we thank you, Holy Spirit, that you have told us that the righteous will cry, but you answer that many, oh God, are the warfare that we face, oh God, but you will never leave us. You will never forsake us. You are the one who said, no weapon found against us shall prosper. They will form a spirit of the living God, but they cannot prosper. No weapon can stand up against the power of God that is moving upon this life, that is moving in the life of the believers, that is moving from the north south east and west we speak this morning god almighty to every wind that is coming against us we cause now my god a silence to take place in the rents of the spirit hallelujah we bind up now every adverse wind coming against the people of god who are watching this broadcast we declare victory over that situation now in the mighty name of jesus christ of nazareth let your holy spirit move let your presence be felt let your blessings flow in the name of jesus christ my Mighty God, we pray that you will lift the burden from their shoulders this morning. Whatever that situation is, you are standing in the midst as you did for Daniel in the lion's den. We shut them out of every lion that surrounds your people this morning. We shut them out of every lion that surrounds them now in the name of Jesus Christ. My God, as you did for the Hebrew boys, we decree and declare that a strand of their hair shall be touched. It doesn't matter how the war is raging, but you are standing in the fire with us. You have already released Archangel Gabriel. You have already re released Archangel Michael to stand in the midst for the people of God. It is already done. It is already done. The battle, the battle, it is already won in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, God, we thank you for the victory. We thank you right now in the name of Jesus. Let your blessings locate every person on this life who came on believing God. 
They will not leave the same way that they came because your Holy Spirit is moving upon this life. Your Holy Spirit is alive and well. Your Holy Spirit shall set this life on fire in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Every mountain standing between us and our victory is coming down this morning, God. Every Red Sea standing between us and the victory, it is going to dry up. We shall cross over on dry land. It is already done for the people of God who are standing in faith. It is already done in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Spirit of the living God. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Apostle Peter, who is watching. God bless you, man of God. Good morning to you, Sister Yamina. Good morning to you, everybody who is watching. Nicole Ricketts, all of you. May the blessings of the Lord be upon you in a most mighty and powerful way. Even as you have never experienced it before, let it be done for you this morning. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. Let me bring the music down a little bit. People of God, I want to make sure that you can hear me this morning as I prepare to share a timely word with you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We thank you, Spirit of the living God, for this beautiful day that you have made. We thank you for the blessings upon your people. We thank you, God, that your hand is up on this broadcast and that you will bless us this morning, God, as we receive your word. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Yes, Lord. Yes, it is done. It is done. It is done in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. As I prepare to minister the word this morning, I just want to encourage all of you who have not shared to go ahead and do so now. Be a blessing to somebody because many of us are in the midst of battles that we don't know how to fight. We are in the midst of battles that we don't understand. So as I prepare to release the word, this song you're hearing in the background, it's called No Other God and it's by Dr. Tume. He's another African worship singer. I don't know which African country he's from, but I'm telling you, I love these Africans. I love the way they worship. So let this song minister to your spirit as I prepare the word this morning. I shall bring you a word to open your spiritual eyes. I shall bring you a word to bring enlightenment this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. Any form of darkness that surrounds you, by the time this word is delivered, it shall be lifted off your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. This song is called No Other God and it's by Dr. Tume. Hallelujah. Just allow these words to soak into your spirit as I prepare to give you the word of God this morning. Amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Let me see if I can follow you guys on Facebook as I prepare to share the word with you. I want to make sure that I'm staying in touch with you. I'm seeing your comments and I'm responding. Hallelujah. Thank you, Spirit of the living God. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm seeing Millicent Hall. How are you doing, Sister Millicent? Good morning, Colleen Carter. Good morning to everybody who is watching me. I am following on two phones. Want to make sure that I stay in touch with you guys and that I can see your comments and respond. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. The word this morning, how to know if you're in a spiritual battle. That is the word this morning. A lot of you are in spiritual battles. You're frustrated because you don't know that that's the kind of battle you're in. You're frustrated because you do not know how to fight the battle that is raging in your life. Carleen Riches, how are you? Good morning, Michelle Gray Edwards. Good morning to you, Dorothy Peterson. Good morning to you, Sister Trudy Smith and everybody else who is watching. Amen. Guys, let me know if you can hear me clearly or if I need to turn this music down a little bit more. You know, I'm serious about the word, so I want to make sure you don't miss anything as I share the word with you this morning. Let me know if you are hearing me clearly or if I need to turn this music down a little bit. Work with me. Work with me. Work with me. Amen. Hallelujah. Just work with me, people of God. Thank you, Spirit of the living God. Thank you, Jesus. Sister Gemma is saying she's not able to get in. Sister Gemma, I'm live on Facebook. I'm not on Zoom, sis. I'm not on Zoom, Sister Gemma. I'm on Facebook. I hope that you can hear me and join me on Facebook. I'm not on Zoom. I don't have an audience on Zoom. It's just me here on Zoom this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Let me see if I can follow your comments. Guys, are you hearing me clearly? Are you hearing me clearly, Melissa? Yes, she says clearly. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. Good morning to everybody who's just joining me. This is a word that is designed this morning to enlighten you. This is a word that is designed this morning to open your spiritual eyes, amen? So I want you to make sure that you stay with me. If you have not shared the live yet, share it now. And then I want you to like and follow the page if you're not following. And I want you to participate in the program as I go ahead, comment and like. Let's have a wonderful time in the name of the Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit of the living God. I want to talk to you this morning about how to know when you are in spiritual battle. Amen. So we will be looking at some of the signs that what you're experiencing 
facing is spiritual warfare. And if time permits, I will look at some of the ways that you can protect yourself against some of these spiritual attacks. Amen. So get your Bibles ready, people of God. If you got your Bible, just type, yes, Rev, I got my Bible. Get your Bibles ready, people of God. You know, we deal with the word of God when we are coming out. Amen. We don't just speak things, but we refer you to the scriptures to back up what is being taught. Amen. So get your Bibles ready. If you have your Bible, just say, yes, Rev, I got my Bible. I know some of you don't have a physical Bible in your hand, but you may have your, your laptop, you may have your tablet, you have your phone. So find the Bible on your phone and follow me this morning as I share this word with you about spiritual battles. Amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Now, I want you to turn your Bibles with me to the book of Ephesians chapter 6. I'm going to read for you from verse 11 to 12. Ephesians chapter 6, somebody type that on the broadcast. Ephesians 6, I'm reading from verse 11 to 12. You can also post it there if you're following in your Bible. Just go to the book of Ephesians chapter 6. I'm going to read for you from verse 11 to 12. Amen. It says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Some versions of the Bible say in heavenly places. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, reading that scripture, I must say there are many people who still do not believe in the things of the spirit. Are you hearing me, somebody, this morning? There are many persons who still do not believe in the things of the spirit. They don't believe that we can be affected by demonic powers. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. They do not believe that we can be thank you Cynthia Corral thank you for letting me know you can hear clearly sister God bless you they don't believe that there are different things that can affect us that are not natural they don't believe that there are things of the spirit that can affect our lives amen thank you spirit of the living God so this morning I want to enlighten you when you are in spiritual battle, how to recognize what it is that you are dealing with. Hallelujah. Now, I just read for you Ephesians chapter 6, and I read 11 to 12, verse 11 to 12. And I've read that scripture, and I want those of you who were not aware of that scripture, that tells us that there are two different worlds. Amen. There's a spirit world and there's a natural world. Amen. I want you to write down that scripture for your own reference, because the Bible is telling us that there's a spiritual world and there's a natural world. From the scripture, it is saying, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. So you must make sure that you write that scripture down. For those of you who are not aware, those of you who do not know how to fight spiritual battles, those of you who are not aware that some of the things that are happening in your life, they began in the spiritual realm. And the reason why you're wrestling with them for so long is because you're fighting the wrong enemy and you're fighting with the wrong weapons. Amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. They don't believe. That is some of you watching this morning and there are other persons who will see this broadcast later on that do not believe believe that we can be affected by demonic powers. You don't believe that the devil is real and you don't believe that demons exist. You don't believe that in addition to God's kingdom, there is the kingdom of light. And in addition to the kingdom of light, there's also a kingdom of darkness that the enemy has modeled after God's kingdom. Come on, somebody, he has copied the hierarchy in God's kingdom and he has counterfeited the power of God that we experience as believers. Come on, evidence of the counterfeit power of the enemy. It's around us every day, people of God. We see it in the false tongues that some people speak. We see it in false prophecies. We see it in fake miracles. And of course, the Bible tells us that these works of the enemy have been in existence from Bible days. It's not something that just started now. It has been around from Bible days. Come on, people of God, turn your Bible to Exodus chapter 7. Follow me to book of Exodus now. Chapter 7, I'm going to read for you from verse 10 to 12. In this scripture, it shows us that there are powers of darkness that deceive us by performing miracles. When Moses and Aaron threw down their rods in front of Pharaoh, the rods became serpents, but the magicians that Pharaoh called, they also threw down their rods and their rods became serpents, people of God. But what we must note is that although they threw their rods down and their rods became serpents, Aaron's rod swallowed up the rod that the magicians threw down. Come on, somebody. So in 1 Kings 18, you will see also that Elijah had a showdown with the prophets of Baal, which ended in embarrassment 
Cyrus meant for the prophets of Baal. Are you hearing me, somebody? Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Aaron had a showdown with the prophets of Baal, which ended in embarrassment, Elijah, sorry, in embarrassment for the prophets of Baal. Come on, somebody. If you read 1 Kings chapter 18, then you will understand what I'm saying. Because the prophets of Baal, they could not produce the miracles that Elijah produced through the power of God. So the power of God is clearly superior to the powers of darkness. Are you hearing me, somebody? Some people don't know these things. They are ignorant that the ever-present battle is going on between good and evil. We just live in the natural world. We get up every day. We go to work. We go to school. We go to church, wherever. And at the same time, we do not recognize that there is a kingdom of darkness. There are evil forces that affect the way we live, that affect the way we think, that affect our health, that affect our lives, people of God. So because you don't know these things, you struggle with issues which are not natural, but you don't know that they are not natural. Hallelujah. You don't know that the sickness, you don't know that the cycle of disappointments, you don't know that the stagnation in your life, you don't know that what you're calling bad luck is really an experience with forces of darkness. You do not know that there is a warfare that is going on that is being raged against you by the enemy in the realms of the spirit. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Sometimes the people don't know because they're not true believers who know the word of God and have a relationship with God. Sometimes people do not know because you're not walking in the spirit. You're walking in the flesh. So you don't believe in the unseen a spiritual realm beyond what your natural eyes can see because you're walking in the flesh and not in the spirit. Can I tell somebody this morning? Some people think that we are crazy for even mentioning spiritual warfare. They think we are crazy. They think we are cuckoo. Come on, somebody. I've seen people distance themselves from me because I speak about spiritual things that they don't accept. So they think that I'm nuts. They think that I'm cuckoo. They think I'm crazy. Come on, somebody. Do you understand what I'm saying this morning? The other day, I had an experience, people of God, with a, a witchcraft attack against me. And when I responded in the spirit, when I responded with my spiritual weapons, somebody who I shared this with, and they don't believe in the things that I believe, they don't believe in some of the spiritual things, they laughed it off and they said, I heard you rebuking birds. Did you hear what I said, somebody? The person laughed it off and they said, I heard you rebuking birds. So all they saw was a bird in the natural and I was rebuking the bird, but they did not see the power that was coming with that thing that was sent at me in the realms of the spirit. They can't see it. Come on, somebody, let me tell you why. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 14 that the person without the spirit does not accept the things that come from the spirit of God, but considers them foolishness, people of God, and they cannot understand them because they are discerned only through the spirit. Are you hearing me, somebody? That is why when you say certain things to some people, they think you're crazy, they think you're cuckoo. That is why some people stay away from me. They say, oh, look how she look nice. And she talk about all these things in the spirit. She's crazy. She's a wako. Come on, somebody. Are you hearing me this morning? What they don't understand is that God has given me the spirit of discernment and that God has opened my spiritual eyes and that because God has taken me out of the realm of ignorance, I am now able to fight my battle because I know who my enemy is. And I know that the weapons that are given to me by God are mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. Are you hearing me, somebody? So anybody who wants to call me crazy, Anybody who wants to call me cuckoo, you are welcome. The cuckoo lady is here. The cuckoo lady is here to pray for you. The cuckoo lady is here to deliver you. The cuckoo lady is here to bring your healing through the power of God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Come on, somebody. Are you hearing me this morning? The Bible establishes that there's a spiritual realm. And so if there's a spiritual realm, people of God, is there such a thing as spiritual warfare? Come with me, people of God. Let me take you back to the word of God. Hallelujah. In the book of Ephesians chapter 6, let us read from verses 11 through to 12. Hallelujah. It says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the enemy. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So clearly, I want somebody to understand this morning that there is warfare that is taking place in the spirit world hallelujah to the lamb of god there is warfare that is taking place in the spirit world hallelujah jesus
Jesus and some people are not aware of it and that is why they are struggling hallelujah to the Lamb of God there is warfare that is taking place there's a war of good versus evil and there are other realms beside beside the earth realm that man lives hallelujah the scripture says we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against powers rulers of darkness in high places so spiritual battles are happening to you spiritual battles are happening to us spiritual battles are happening around us every day 24 7 365 days of the year but some of you are not able to discern the genesis of what is taking place in your life when certain things are happening in the spiritual realm you cannot see it because you're walking in the flesh the problem for many of us as believers is that you're fighting these battles with the wrong weapons because you lack the knowledge of what you're up against and when you lack the knowledge of what you're up against you do not know how to defeat it the bible says my people perish because of lack of knowledge are you hearing me somebody in order to win a war you must know your enemy come on somebody type that if you are going to win the war you must know your enemy you must know who you're up against unfortunately people of god a lot of believers are not adequately equipped equipped to fight this unseen enemy and that is why you experience long battles of spiritual warfare that wear you down and cause you to lose faith in god and that's exactly where the enemy wants you some of you are right there today you have been fighting battles for a long time and you are weary, you are tired. The battles have worn you down and you are beginning to, you're beginning to lose faith in God. And that's exactly where the enemy wants you. Come on, somebody, listen to me. Witchcraft is real. Witchcraft is real, people of God. Yes, the cuckoo lady is telling you this morning that witchcraft is real. The crazy lady, the one who is crazy for God and crazy for the things of God, is telling you this morning that witchcraft is real. When I was growing up as a child, and I used to hear people say certain things, of course I used to laugh. I used to think they are crazy too, because I did not understand that there was a spiritual realm. I did not understand that there was a battle going on between the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness. But today I'm in a different place, people of God. The Lord has opened my eyes the lord has caused me to see things that people who are walking in the flesh cannot see and cannot understand so i'm here this morning to tell you that witchcraft is real hallelujah it is one of the most prevalent weapons of the enemy in spiritual warfare biblical evidence is there people of god that witchcraft exists that witchcraft is real that witchcraft existed from old testament days come with me to the book of deuteronomy now deuteronomy 18 and let us read from verse 9 to 13 come on somebody witchcraft is real deuteronomy 18 from verse 9 to 13 it says witchcraft is an abomination it means that god detests this evil practice are you hearing me somebody if you go to deuteronomy 18 let us read from 10 to 13 now it says it is a serious thing when you engage in the act of witchcraft come on somebody the lord is denouncing the act of witchcraft and sorcery it says let no one be found among you who sacrifices their son or daughter in the fire who practices divination or sorcery, who interprets omens, engages in witchcraft or cast spells, or who is a medium or spiritist, or who consults the dead. Anyone who does these things is detestable to the Lord because some of these same detestable practices, the Lord your God will drive you out of those nations before you. You must be blameless before the Lord your God. This is the word of God telling you this morning to stay away from the practice of witchcraft. Stay away from anybody who tells you that they speak to the dead stay away from anybody who casts spells stay away from anybody who practices divination or sorcery come on somebody for those of you who will say okay then witchcraft was dead in the old testament but it doesn't exist now come with me right now to the book of acts chapter 16 remember paul and silas had an encounter with a girl with a spirit of divination in the book of acts chapter 16 she was reading people as we like to call it now because some of you when you come to church because a prophet is there you're not coming for the word of god you're coming for a read up a lot of you that's what you call it you call it read up you want a read up just like when i was in the media and i was a journalist and you had some entertainers who would call me and say miss burby can i get a write-up a lot of people come to church because they want a read up come on somebody you know i'm speaking the truth this morning so this girl in the book of acts chapter 16 that paul and silas encountered she was reading people and reading them accurately come on somebody yes they can read you and read you accurately what they tell you 
you may be true, but the spirit of God is not in it. It's not the spirit of God that is giving them that information. And it is still happening today, even in the pulpits of the church. Are you hearing me, somebody? Revelations 21 and verse 8 also clearly states, people of God, that those who engage in witchcraft practices have no place with God unless you repent. It says, but the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic arts, the idolaters and all liars, they will be consigned to the fiery lake of burning sulfur. And this people of God is the second death. Revelations 21 verse 8. I know some of you won't come back to this broadcast. I know some of you will unfollow me after I've shared the scripture with you. But you cannot remain in darkness, people of God. I have come to bring your light this morning. I have come to share the word. And I'm sharing the word without fear because your soul must be saved. You must understand the things that God detests. You must understand the things that will keep you out of heaven. You must understand that there's a place that is called hell. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Listen to me, somebody, in the book of Acts chapter 8. If you go to the book of Acts chapter 8 and read from verse 9 to 13, Simon the sorcerer was converted. So if you have been meddling in witchcraft and all these things that God is saying he detests, you can be redeemed if you repent. If you repent and turn over your life to the Lord. Because Simon repented and he was redeemed. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Listen, witchcraft is often a big part of spiritual warfare. And I'm discussing with you this morning how to know that your battle is a spiritual one. So I wanna enlighten you about some of the signs that will help you identify when you are engaged in spiritual warfare, some of the signs that will help you know that what is happening with you is not natural, hallelujah. The first sign I wanna share with you this morning, write it down somebody, is that there's confusion in your mind. Come on somebody, write that down. There is confusion in your mind, people of God. When you are engaged in a spiritual battle, when you are engaged in spiritual warfare, confusion comes upon you, write it down somebody. That's the first sign, confusion comes in your mind. You're unable to focus, you're, una <coughs> you're unable to complete the task that you have been given there is pure confusion in your mind even simple things you're unable to figure them out a lot of the thoughts in your mind some of the people hear voices you may hear different voices giving you different instru instructions there is contradiction in the instruction you're getting in your head a lot of people who are going through witchcraft attacks will have confusion in their mind you cannot focus you start something and you cannot finish it there are a lot of voices that are speaking to you you feel like you're going to go crazy and can i tell somebody this anytime your mind feel i don't know if you can put these two together but you see the white part of the egg when you beat the egg and you see the white part of the egg anytime your mind start to feel almost like it's egg white when your mind start to feel so fluid and confused you're under witchcraft attack you're in a spiritual battle, people of God. So number one is confusion in your mind. Let us look at number two. When you're going through spiritual attacks, there is heaviness in your spirit. Somebody write that down. You will find that you're often crying and you don't know what you're crying about. You just know that there is sadness in your spirit. You will find that you're sighing all the time and you're wondering, why am I sighing? It's because there is sadness in your spirit. You will find that you are depressed and you're unable to even identify what is making you feel so heavy in your spirit. This is because you're involved in a spiritual battle. The enemy is attacking you with heaviness in your spirit. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. That's number two, people of God. Listen, sometimes, even as a pastor, I have to mentally and spiritually prepare myself to deal with some persons because I can discern the heaviness that is upon their lives. I can discern the heaviness in their spirit. Even before they come to me, I can discern it. Amen? So I have to protect my spiritual and emotional space, people of God, I have to protect my mental space by putting on the full armor of God. Once I discern the heaviness that is coming from that person, I have to put on the full armor of God before I engage with certain spirits. Are you hearing me, somebody? So it's not that pastor don't want to deal with you sometime, but pastor have to be wise in the spirit. Pastor have to cover themselves. Pastor has to make sure they put on the full armor of God to deal with the heaviness that's coming from you, to deal with the witchcraft attacks that are upon your life. Come on, somebody. 
away. It's not that we are rejecting you. We are covering ourselves against the spirit that is behind what we are discerning about your life. So when you go through those periods, when you feel constant heaviness in your spirit and you're just crying, you're just sighing, you're feeling depressed, you cannot identify what is upon you. That is a sign that you're engaged in spiritual battle. That is a sign that the enemy is after you. Come on, somebody. Are you hearing me this morning? Number three, make sure you're writing these down. You can type it on the broadcast, people of God. Number three, and some of you will ignore this because you feel that, okay, I'm just tired. But let me tell you something, people of God. The third sign to know that you're in spiritual battle is constant tiredness, constant fatigue, people of God. When your body feel like it can't go any further, when your mind pop down, when your brain tired, when everything about your body is tired, hallelujah, because you're in a constant battle in the spirit, you can become weary, people of God. You can become tired from fighting. The Bible says pray without ceasing, but that does not mean you should immediately pray for everyone who comes to you for prayer. Come on, somebody. It will wear you down, and as we would say back in my country, Jamaica, it will pop you down. Come on, somebody. If you pray for everybody who just comes and say, Reverend Burby, can you pray for me? I can't do it all the time. There are times when I have to refresh. Sometimes I have to just sit down and rest. Come on, people of God. There is constant tiredness and fatigue when you're in spiritual battle, and we have to protect ourselves against the arrows that the enemy is sending at us. Come on. Yes, people of God, prayers are important in spiritual warfare, but they can tire or tire you out. Waging spiritual warfare requires not only spiritual weapons, people of God, but it requires the physical stamina because anything that wears down your mind, it's going to send a signal to your brain and your brain is going to signal the rest of your body that you are tired. So you will lose physical strength when you're engaged in spiritual battles. That is why people of God, I tell you all the time that you need to rest. That is why your diet is so important. Hallelujah. Sometimes you need to just shut everything off, shut everything down, turn off your phone and rest, rejuvenate your body, people of God. Make some natural juices. Are you hearing me? Eat up your vegetables, eat up your fruits, eat up your fiber and put some strength back in your body because I'm telling you the devil does not go on vacation. The devil does not rest. And when he's coming at you, the constant warfare can wear you down where you're going to begin to feel tired. You're going to be begin to feel fatigue. Every part of your body is going to tell you, say, if your body get up this morning, one morning you will wake up and your body just said to you, so if your body get up out of bed because you have been through so many battles, it has worn you down, people of God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, somebody. I have been right there. I have been to the point where I wake up one morning and my dresser was just a few inches away from my bed and I needed something on the dresser and I could not lift my hand to take it up because I was so exhausted physically, emotionally, spiritually. I was so exhausted that I could not reach out and take up this thing that I needed on my dresser. Are you hearing me, somebody? So sometimes you need to rest. Sometimes you need to step back. Sometimes you need to shut off the phone. Sometimes you need to avoid calls from certain people. I'm telling you, people of God, you need to rest. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Can I share with you this morning that deliverance ministers and those ministers who carry heavy anointing, they are sometimes at their weakest after a major deliverance has taken place or after a highly anointed sermon. Who knew that? Yes, there are ministers and deliverance ministers who when they do a major deliverance, they lose power. Their body becomes weak. You're at your weakest because you have poured out so much. You might feel weak in your body because of how high you have gone in the spirit. So right now, after that major deliverance, after that major sermon that you have delivered, you begin to feel weak in your body because you have gone so high up in the spirit that it takes a toll on your body. That is why sometimes I would minister and then end up on my knees at the end of the sermon. And I've seen this happen with other ministers who minister under heavy anointing and pour out a lot to people. So I'm here to enlighten you this morning, people of God, that rest is needed because the enemy will use tiredness to attack you. He will use fatigue to attack you. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Always have other people who are covering you in prayer. A man does not function by himself. He must have others who are praying for him. You will not be able to pray for yourself all the time because when weariness comes upon you in the spiritual realm, you will have no power to open your mouth and even say, God save me. There have been moments that I personally have not been able to open 
in my mouth and say, God, deliver me because I have been so tired. So I'm here to tell somebody this morning that weakness, constant fatigue over your body, over your brain, in your spirit is also a sign of a spiritual attack that is coming against you. Amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Are you following me this morning? If you get it, just say yes, Rev. I get it. If you get it, just say yes, Rev. I get it. Good morning to you, Marion Thomas. If you get it, say yes, Rev. I get it. Evangelist Deborah, Anna Green. Good morning, Anne Marie Sears. If you get it, just say yes, Rev. I get it. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Now listen, number four, signs that you are warfare or that you're involved in a spiritual battle. Number four is sicknesses that you cannot explain. Sicknesses that the doctors cannot diagnose. Come on, somebody. Doctors are unable to tell you what's wrong with you or what's wrong with the person. Many of us have seen these things happen and we are not in a position to help because we did not have the knowledge about spiritual warfare. But now that you know, you can pray, you can fast, you can see seek God's deliverance, you can seek healing from the power of God against the spirit of infirmity that is affecting your, yourself or affecting that person. Are you hearing me, somebody? So next time you see somebody sick and the doctors don't know what, what is wrong with them, pray. Pray. Pray against the spirit of infirmity. Pray against every unseen force that is attacking this person. Hallelujah. There's a spiritual realm and many times people are under attack. Sometimes it's a curse that is coming through their bloodline. Sometimes it is things that they themselves have done that has caused a sickness to, that, that comes upon them. Are you hearing me, somebody? Yes, some of you don't want to know the truth. But yes, there are times when you have done things and because you have not repented, a sickness can come upon you. Are you hearing me this morning? Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Number five, people, the signs that you are under spiritual attack, the signs that your warfare is not natural. These are patterns of disappointment. Write that down somebody patterns of disappointment hallelujah to the lamb of god patterns and cycles of repeated failure in your life failure at things that you would normally be able to do easily people of god some people cannot pass a particular exam no matter how hard they study no matter how hard they try no matter how prepared they are at the time of the exam they begin to experience confusion in their mind they begin to have memory loss they freeze up and so they fail this is because you're under attack from some force of darkness people of God because the enemy is coming at you you're involved in spiritual warfare your battle is not normal your battle is spiritual are you hearing me somebody I hope you're writing that down patterns of disappointment a lot of people sometimes they struggle to pass exams they go to the exam center over and over and they do the one exam five times six times and can't pass it and they don't realize that something is happening that is not natural I'm here to tell you this morning to check yourself out go before the Lord and ask him to reveal to your father God, what is it that is happening? Why I cannot pass this exam? Mighty God, if there's an unseen force of darkness that is fighting against me, reveal it to me, oh God, and give me the strategy to defeat it in the name of Jesus Christ. You got to open your mouth and ask the Lord for revelation. And then you ask him for instruction. How do I fight this battle, mighty God? Show me how to fight in the spirit. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Listen to me, people of God. Number six, write that down. Write that down now, people of God. Number six, I want you to understand the next thing that will come at you hallelujah to the lamb of god when you are involved in a spiritual battle the next thing that will come at you is accusation and slander somebody write that down oh glory to god somebody write that down while i get me some water good morning apostle george good morning apostle how are you good morning to you donna thompson good morning to you loretta chambers amen yes all right so i'm moving on to number six which is accusation and slander. A lot of you have been going through this and don't realize it's the enemy that is attacking you. Come on, listen. Anytime you see accusation and slander coming at you, even from people who do not know you, this is a big one. And it happens normally when God is about to elevate you. It happens normally when you're about to get a promotion. It happens when God is about to shift you to your next level. Come on, somebody type that next level. Hallelujah. The spirit of accusation and slander will rise up against you just at that time when God is ready to shift you, just at that time when he's ready to promote you, just at that time when he's ready to elevate you. Come on, somebody, make sure you're taking these notes this morning. So the timing of these kinds of attacks of accusation and slander will often indicate to you that these accusations are coming from 
a place that is not of God. The timing of these types of accusations, it will give you an indication of where the accusations are coming from, where they are generated. They begin in the spirit realm, people of God. Hallelujah. The Bible says the devil is an accuser of the brethren. He accuses every one of us who are believers. He accuses and slanders you. And he uses accusation and slander as a strategy to stop your promotion, to stop your elevation. Hallelujah. Somebody type, my promotion will not be stopped. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Somebody tell the devil this morning, my promotion will not be stopped. Tell the devil this morning that my victory is assured. Come on, somebody, type it on this broadcast. My victory is assured. Tell the devil this morning that you're a liar. You're a liar from the pit of hell. My victory is assured. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Listen, people of God, the enemy uses accusations and slander to mess up your reputation in the eyes of those who think highly of you. Anybody who think highly of you, the devil is going to try to get to them with accusation and slander because he wants to turn off their minds. He wants to turn them against you, hallelujah. It also means when you see the devil rise up like that on the verge of your elevation, it means that he's trying to cause the people who God has sent to help you to begin to question your character. They want, they're going to begin to question whether or not they should associate with you. This is a direct attack from the enemy. Anytime you see this begin to happen, it is because God is about to shift you. It is, it is because your promotion is near. It is, it is because your elevation is near. Hallelujah. So the enemy begins to stir up all kinds of questions in the minds of people who think highly of you by throwing words out there among people to tell lies on you, to accuse you of things you know nothing about and to slander your name. Hallelujah the Lamb of God. Now, come with me. Number seven, people of God, write this one down. This one is called the spirit of overwhelm. Hallelujah. Now, when you are under attack from the spirit of overwhelm, everything is going to begin to go wrong in your life simultaneously. All at once, everything that could go wrong is going to go wrong. Anything you expected to go through for you, it will fail. When you are under attack from the spirit of overwhelm, anything you expected to go through for you, it's going to fail because you're coming under attack from the spirit of overwhelm. When you come under this kind of attack, it is a sign that breakthrough is imminent. Did you hear what I said, somebody? Any time a flurry of attacks come at you at the same time, it is designed to break you down. It is designed to frustrate you. And it is because your breakthrough is imminent. So people of God, now is not the time to give up. When you're going through that kind of overwhelming attack upon your life it is not time to give up that's not time to throw in the towel the bible says you must put on the full armor of god so you can stand against the wiles of the enemy come on somebody all of these simultaneous attacks that you're experiencing these are the wiles of the enemy these are his strategies to get you frustrated to shake your faith in god and to get you to give up but when you know who your enemy is you are able to defeat him people of god because you know the weapons of your warfare because you know the tactics that are coming from the enemy and that God has already given you the weapons to win that battle. You don't give up when you're going through that. You don't give up people of God. This is when you fight. This is not the time to run. It is the time to give it all that you have got and disappoint the enemy. Are you hearing me somebody? Somebody type, I will disappoint the enemy. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. This is the time when you should fight like Rocky. You know Rocky, have you watched the Rocky movies? The Boxer, have you watched those movies? It's one of my favorite movies of all time. This is the time when you must begin like Rocky, fight like Rocky. You don't dunk out of the ring, you punch back and you punch your hardest at this time when you're up against the ropes. This is when you fight for your life. You don't run through the ropes and run out of the ring. You stand up and fight because God is leading that battle and victory is already assured. Come on, somebody. Even till today, there are times when I sense the attack Attacks of the enemy that are coming at me simultaneously. And in addition to praying people of God, in addition to fasting, in addition to standing on the word of God, I use minister, I use music to minister to my spirit. Come on, somebody. The music helps to get me to a place where I feel undefeatable. Mm -hmm. Some of you need to understand the power of music and what worship music can do to lift you. But can you believe that there are other music out there that can inspire you apart from worship music? Because when I see that the enemy is coming at me with everything that he has got, when I see the enemy coming at me with the bathtub and the kitchen sink and everything else, I am the kind of person where I'm going to turn on some music to lift my spirit. Do you want to know one of the songs that I listen to? One of the songs that pulls me out of the depths of darkness 
any time I'm in that mode where I feel low in my spirit, one of the songs I listen to is Survivor. The same song, the soundtrack from the Rocky movies. Yes, people of God. Mm -hmm. The soundtrack from the Rocky movies. It's called Survivor. Um, I think, no, I think the name of the singers is Survivor. So if you go to the Rocky movies and listen to that song, the song that they use as a soundtrack, that song will lift your spirit. I'm telling you somebody, it is a powerful song and it does it for me. Rising up. I don't even remember the words, but I'm telling you when I listen to it, Eye of the Tiger, that's the name of the song. Eye of the Tiger and it's by Survivor. So you can YouTube it. Look for it and listen to that song. I'm telling you, when you're in a dark place, if you are somebody who has watched the Rocky movies, there may come a time when you need to pull on that song to pull you out of the pit. Amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Now, if time permits, I'm just going to go through some of the things that can invite unnecessary warfare in your life. So what I'm trying to do now, having gone through the signs that you're in spiritual battle, I want to take you through some of the things that you can be aware of that can invite unnecessary warfare into your lives so that you will know if there are some doors that you need to close. The first one that can invite unnecessary warfare is unwise friendship and association. Write that down. Unwise friendships, friendships and association. Now, in Jamaica, we have a saying, or maybe not just in Jamaica, but anywhere. It says, show me your friends and I'll tell you who you are. Mm -hmm. Show me your friends and I'll tell you who you are. Proverbs 13 and verse 20 says, he who walks with wise men will be wise, but the companions of fools will suffer harm. Did you hear that? That's the scripture. Proverbs 13 and verse 20. So your company matters. Hallelujah. The battles that we find ourselves in sometimes, we bring it on ourselves through our friends and the people that we associate with. The prodigal son wasted his money because he had friends around him that were helping to lead him astray. Not one of them said, hey, save your money. Invest it in something that you don't have to go broke and return to your father's house. So I'm here to tell somebody this morning, unwise friendships and associations can open the door to spiritual attacks. You can find yourself engaged in battles that you don't belong in simply because of the people that you have around you come on somebody first corinthians 15 and verse 33 says be not deceived bad company corrupts good morals some of you are walking quite fine with god until certain people come into your life and they distract you with the way they speak they distract you with the things they share they distract you with how they live their lives they distract you with their friends that they are a part of and because you have found yourself in the crowd that you don't belong in you invite unnecessary warfare into your life Life. So I'm here to tell you this morning to be careful of your associations, be careful of your friendships, because God is ministering that unwise friendships and associations can bring you into spiritual warfare. It can cause you to take on battles that you don't belong in. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Father God. This is the word of God this morning, Sophia Armsley. This is the word of God this morning, Devrin Henry Cole. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. God said, be not deceived. Bad company corrupts good morals. So watch your friends. Watch who is in your circle. Watch who you take in your house. Watch who you keep close to you and tell your business. Watch everything concerning the people who are around you. Oh, hallelujah. Now, number two, I'm talking to you now about things that can cause unnecessary warfare in your life. Ungodly counsel. Somebody write that down. Ungodly counsel. Be careful from whom you take advice, especially if you are a believer. You cannot take advice from just anybody because some people are going to advise you from the flesh. The Bible says in Psalm 1 verse 1, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Come on, somebody write that down. Hallelujah. As a believer, you cannot just take counsel from anybody. When the Bible speaks about unequally yoke, it also refers to who you take advice from because wisdom is key, people of God. A believer walks in the spirit and unbeliever walks in the flesh. So a believer must be careful what kind of advice you take from an unbeliever because if you follow that advice, you can open doors for the enemy to afflict you. You can end up in spiritual battles. You can end up in warfare that you don't belong in. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Are you getting it this morning, people of God? Yes, number two, ungodly counsel. Be careful who is giving you advice, whose advice you are following as a believer because it can cause you to be engaged in unnecessary spiritual battles, battles that you have no business being in because you have taken wrong advice, wrong counsel, ungodly counsel. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Let us go further, people of God. I want to take you down to number three, the prayers. Hallelujah, this is a big one. The things that can attract unnecessary battles in your life. Write this one down, people of God. Praying for people who God is dealing with. Huh? 
Yes. Believe it or not, it's not everybody who come to you for prayer. You must pray. Or even if you're going to pray, you pray the will of God directly. When they tell you the problems they are facing, if the spirit of God begins to minister to you that something is wrong, that you must not touch, then it, you must make sure, people of God, that you don't pray. If you don't know what the battle is and the spirit of God is saying, don't touch it, then don't touch it. Just say, Lord, let your will be done. And that's it. When you, out of ignorance and youthful exuberance, sometimes engage demonic forces on behalf of people that God himself is dealing with and he has not released you to intercede for them but you owe me a mouth and you start tear down principalities and powers you start lick left right and center with your spiritual sword and don't realize the sword is going to come right back at you because the person that you are fighting for God is dealing with them God is dealing with them so you have no right no permission to go and pray no permission to engage in spiritual warfare for them Sometimes the battles that people are fighting, God allows it for a reason. Sometimes people have unforgiveness in them. Sometimes people have done things, wicked things. And God is allowing them to be dealt with. He's allowing them to be processed. So you cannot come and interfere with that, that period of processing by opening your mouth and engaging in spiritual warfare on behalf of these persons. You must step back and allow God to deal with them. They must be processed. Just say, let the will of God be done in your life in Jesus' name. Brother, let the will of God be done. Sister, let the will of God be done in your life in Jesus' name. You don't say anything about it. You say, let the will of God be done. You don't open your mouth and start tear down all kind of powers and principalities, all kind of demonic forces. When you tear them down, when you think them are going, straight into your house, straight into your life. Straight in your life is where they are coming. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. So use wisdom, people of God, and the spirit of discernment to know who to pray for. Because some people, God has not released you to pray for them because he is dealing with them. He's allowing them to be processed. You can pray for someone, but be careful what you are praying. Pray the will of God be done in their lives, but do not enter into warfare on their behalf. See God before you try to intercede for somebody who the spirit of God is ministering to you about them. If the Lord is saying something is wrong, don't say a word, don't open your mouth. They then do not open your mouth. Amen. Let me share something with you very quickly, people of God. Since we are on this topic of who you should pray for, who you should not pray for sometimes. Listen, sometimes you take on backers by trying to even do deliverance in places where people are welcoming and hosting demons. And then you will come on that attack. For example, there's a man of God that went to a church. He was invited to the church and when he went to the church, demons began to manifest in the church and he got up ready to rebuke the demons and the spirit of God said, sit down, do not say a word. So he said, Lord, there are demons manifesting. Why would you say I should sit down and not say a word? And the Lord said, you cannot rebuke these demons. They have the legal right to be here. You know why people have gone? Because the leaders of the church had lifted up altars, demonic altars right here in the church. They had lifted up sacrifices to the devil right there in the church. And because they had given the enemy legal right, they had given these demons legal right to be in the church. This man of God couldn't come from outside and rebuke those demons until those pastors, those leaders repented. He had no right to get up and rebuke anything. If he had gone ahead and done it, when the Lord said, don't do it, quite likely he would have received what we call a blow. It could be sickness and it could even be death. So be careful, people of God. It's not everybody you must fight on their behalf. Sometimes God is dealing with them. And sometimes people are hosting demons and the demons have a legal right to be in their house or to be in their life. In this case, the demons had a legal right to be in this church because the leaders of the church were working witchcraft. They had lifted up altars of witchcraft right there in the church. So this man of God had no authority to rebuke those demons because they were operating legally in that church. Are you hearing me, somebody? Are you learning something this morning? Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. We need to know those things. We need to know those things and understand that we walk in certain authority, but there are also rules, there are principles in the kingdom of light. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. So God would not allow him to intercede. God would not allow him to interfere because the people in the church, the leaders, had given those demons the right to be there. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Let me go to number four for you quickly because I'm about to wrap up. These are the things that can cause you to engage in unnecessary warfare. Unforgiveness, people of God. Listen, the first prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, remember, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in 
in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. The mention here of debts mean trespass, forgiveness, people of God. So Jesus was teaching his disciples that in order for God to release you and to bless you, you must be able to forgive those who have wronged you. Hallelujah. So because a lot of us have unforgiveness on our hearts, the breakthrough won't come. Because of unforgiveness, it leads to the spirit of anger. It causes you to develop hatred towards persons. And then that causes doors to open in your life, which will allow the enemy to inflict you with sickness, inflict you with delays, inflict you with stagnation, inflict you with further frustration and pain, people of God. So if you're watching me this morning, I want you to understand that if you're holding on to unforgiveness, it's an open door for the enemy to come and afflict you with spiritual warfare. You can find yourself in spiritual battles because there's too much unforgiveness in your heart. And can I tell somebody this morning, when you have these things on your heart for a long time, it can cause you to be sick. Sometimes you see people with heart problems. Sometimes you see people with high blood pressure. It is because of unforgiveness in their spirit. So there's a spirit of infirmity that comes upon them. It affects their blood pressure. It affects their heart. These are things that the people of God need to understand. Forgiveness is key for your release. Forgiveness is key for your breakthrough. Forgiveness is key to keep the enemy away. Forgiveness is key, people of God. I know some of you don't want to hear this, but forgiveness is for you. It's not for your enemy. Release them so that God can bless you. Come on, somebody. Write that. Release my enemies, Lord, so I can, you can bless me. I release my enemies this morning, God, so that you can bless me. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Yes. So that is unforgiveness, number four. Number five, I'm trying to wrap up for you now, people of God, is disobedience and rebellion. Anytime you have a spirit of rebellion upon your life, when you're a rebellious person, you can un attract unnecessary warfare. Come on. Some of you in the church, and all you do in the church is cause problem. You cause problem among the brethren. You cause problem for your pastor. Some of you, no matter what the pastor tell you, you disobey because you have a spirit of disobedience and a spirit of rebellion. Hallelujah. Some of you are in the church, and instead of focusing on your spiritual growth and walking in love, walking as Christ has told you that you need to. You sow a discord in the church and there comes a spirit of disobedience and rebellion upon your life. And then when you start to have problems in your own life, you don't know where the problem is coming from. It is a door that has been opened because of the spirit of disobedience and rebellion that is upon your life. So it is causing you problems in the realms of the spirit. The enemy will wage warfare against you. When he sees that there is an open door, you will start experiencing problems and don't know where it come from. I'm here to tell you this morning. It's because of disobedience. It is because of rebellion. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Listen to me. Saul disobeyed God and he paid the price because the spirit of God departed from him. When he disobeyed God, the spirit of God departed from him and his legacy was eventually destroyed. If you go to the book of 1 Samuel 13 and read from verse 9 to 14, you will see that Saul, he did not wait for Samuel to come to bless him before the battle with the Philistines. So he went ahead and, and sent up burnt offerings, which he was not instructed to do. He was told to wait until Samuel got there. Amen. Saul should have utilized his faith in God when he saw that Samuel had not yet arrived and his army was out numbered but instead he went ahead and did what he wanted to do he relied upon his own counsel he disobeyed God and paid the price come on somebody the scripture says he waited seven days the time set by Samuel but Samuel did not come to Gilgal and Saul's men began to scatter so of course he began to lose faith in God and he went ahead of Samuel to offer up that burnt offering and because he was disobedient he lost the spirit of God the spirit of God departed from him hallelujah to the Lamb of God listen the word of God in first Samuel 15 10 says that the Lord the word of the Lord came to Samuel I regret that I have made Saul king because he has turned away from me and has not carried out my instructions Samuel was angry and he cried out to the Lord all that night Saul was given instructions in the battle with the Amalekites to destroy everything in first Samuel 15 and verse 3 he was told to wipe the place clean spare none and do not take anything back with you but Saul disobeyed God he speared the king's life and he took back spoils, which angered God. So we see a pattern of disobedience now with Saul. So Saul's legacy was destroyed because of disobedience and rebellion. When you do not obey what God says we should do, 
You're walking in disobedience. You're walking in rebellion. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Thank you, Spirit of the living God. Yes, Lord. Now, people of God, that is all that I'm sharing with you this morning because I have got some other appointments I need to deal with today. So I hope that you have been blessed by the word that I've shared with you, how to recognize that your battle is not normal, how to recognize when you're under spiritual attack. And then I went through with you some of the things that can cause you to be engaged in unnecessary warfare. There is more that I want to share with you, but I'm going to share with you in another session. Amen. So next time I come live, make sure that you are here. Make sure that you can get this complete teaching people of God, because I believe that somebody's eyes have been opened this morning. I believe this morning somebody's spiritual ears have been opened. I believe this morning that somebody has been enlightened. Amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Make sure you join me next time I come around so that you can be blessed to understand even deeper the things of the spirit that can cause you to come under spiritual attack and what you can do to protect yourself, what you can do to put on the full armor of God and stand against the wiles of the enemy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Spirit of the living God. If you're blessed this morning, let me know that you're blessed. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Let me see if I can pull up one of my favorite songs so that you can be blessed by that song this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Spirit of the living God. Just let me know, people of God, if you understand this word and you have been blessed by the word this morning, let me know. Good morning to you again. Um, Minister Marie, she said, thank you for this powerful teaching. May God continue to bless you. Good morning, Pastor Tila. God bless you. Good to see you. Good morning, Nardia Banton and Hermione Amin. Ina Greya, how are you doing? Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Spirit of the living God. I'm trying to pull up a song that I want to use to minister to you, people of God, before I get off here this morning. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. I think I'm going to play Jabez. Hallelujah. All right, so I'm pulling up something from Jabez this morning. Yay! I think most of you know this song. I think most of you know this song from Jabez that I'm about to play. And I pray that it will bless your life. Amen. Thank you, Spirit of the Living God. This song is called Cancelled. And I wanted to minister to your spirit as I prepare to go. Let me know if you can hear it this morning. And just tell God thanks that he has canceled some things out of your life. Every spiritual arrow that has been coming against your life, it is being canceled now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. This song is called Cancel. If you can hear the song, just sing along this morning and be blessed. Sing along this morning and be blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Sing along this morning and be blessed, people of God. If you can hear the song, it is called Cancel. Thank you, spirit of the living God. Every generational curse is being canceled this morning. Everything coming against you is being canceled. Dolores Rodriguez, everything coming against you, Dahima B, is being canceled. Everything coming against you, Shereen Hay, is being canceled. Thank you, Jesus. Everything coming against you, Catherine Turnquist, it is being canceled. Odette Shaw Blair, it is being canceled. It is being canceled, Bebe Ramschwit. It is being canceled, Sharon Sams, Angela Bowles, it is being canceled. Charlene Powell, it is being canceled. Bridget Walker, it is being canceled. I cover you under the blood right now, Sister Sherlyn Powell, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And I decree and declare that no weapon coming against you will prosper. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. I saturate you in the blood this morning against COVID-19. I speak good health over you now in the name of Jesus. May every arrow coming at you be redirected now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. By his stripes, you are healed. You are covered. You are protected this morning. The blood is speaking for you in the name of Jesus Christ. You shall live. You shall live. Every person on this broadcast who is not feeling well, who is dealing with a spirit of infirmity, I decree you shall live in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I decree that it is cancelled. Every weapon of witchcraft coming against you is cancelled. Every spirit of infirmity is cancelled. Every spirit of delay is cancelled. Every spirit of stagnation is cancelled. Every spirit of disappointment is cancelled. It is cancelled now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Esther Brown. It is cancelled now, Bridget Walker. It is cancelled now, Sharon Sams. It is cancelled now, Catherine. It is cancelled by the power of the living God. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. We are standing this morning under the blood. We decree and declare that you have been washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. The word of God shall stand for you. The blood of God shall speak. The blood of Jesus shall speak for you. 
in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I speak divine covering over you and over your family, over your households, Marisa dos Santos, over you right now, Shereen God, in the name of Jesus Christ. I speak blood covering over you now, my mother, Apostle Frederica Burbick, to whom I have looked all these years. You have been a mentor. You have been an intercessor. You have been a teacher. I bless you this morning, my mother. Good morning, Mary Smith. I bless you in the name of Jesus Christ, Melissa. I cover you under the blood, Melissa Jeremiah. I cover you under the blood, my sister Nadine Burbick. I cover you under the blood, Yamina Maxi. I cover you under the blood, Grace Rambale. I cover you under the blood, every one of you that is watching me this morning and believing God. As you lift your faith, may the Spirit of God locate you. As you lift your faith, may angels of God be dispatched to you right now. Even those of you in the hospital, I decree and declare a divine healing in the name of Jesus Christ. Christ. May the Lord release ministering angels to lift you up out of that bed. Take up your bed and walk in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I curse every spirit of infirmity coming against you. It is canceled Joel Golden. It is canceled Regina. It is canceled Hyacinth Seymour. It is canceled Shaquille Han. It is canceled now by the power of the living God. I decree you are untouchable this morning. I decree this morning in the name of Jesus Christ that whatever was coming against you shall come for you now. It shall turn and work for your good. The Lord is about to turn that situation according to Genesis 50. It is going to turn around for you now in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever was planning against you shall come and testify on your behalf. I speak good things. I speak blessings over your work, over your life. Blessings over the work of your hands. Blessings over your household. Blessings over your children. Blessings over your ministry now by the power of the living God. May the Lord show up and show up in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I decree and declare a turnaround in your situation. A turnaround for you, Sister Claudia Grant Morris, a turn around for you, Nicola Shirley, a turn around for you, Susan Hall, a turn around for you, Mel Anointed Watkins, a turn around in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. It is done for you in Jesus' mighty name. It is already done. It is done. It is done. It is done in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. People of God, can I share with you before I wrap up right now? Can I just share with you and let you know that? The spirit of God can move anywhere you are. If you lift up your faith, the spirit of God can move in your life. So whenever I pray, whenever I release these words, just come into agreement because the spirit of God can locate you wherever you are. He is omnipresent. Our all-powerful, almighty God can touch you wherever you are. So come into agreement. If I don't call your name individually, if you just believe and trust God, he will move in your life. Do not feel bad when we don't pray for you and don't call your name individually. The individual intercessors who are a part of this ministry every Monday they gather and they pray over these prayer requests that you post here they pray over these prayer requests that you send in box and by whatsapp so when you see breakthrough coming in your life the intercessors we are praying behind the scenes not because Reverend Marie does not call your name does not mean the spirit of God is not moving breakthrough is coming for a lot of you if you just believe in the Lord and come into agreement when we pray then your breakthrough will come amen hallelujah I cover you all under the blood and I decree and declare that something good is about to happen in your life. I decree and declare that something good is about to happen in your family. I decree and declare something good is about to happen for your children. In Jesus mighty name. Amen and amen. God bless you everybody. Have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you. Thank you Jesus. Yes you shall live. You shall live. You shall live and declare. You shall live and declare his goodness. You shall live and declare his goodness. I speak life over you this morning as you watch. In Jesus' mighty name. I speak life over you, my brothers and sisters. I speak life over you as I close. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Have a blessed day.